Hey guys, hope you all are doing well. Um, I know that makes me look right there, that scene, like the top of my head's disappearing <laughs> because of the whiteness of the sky. But yes, I do have a, a head above me. Um, I wanted to uh, just do a face um, a Facebook uh, live uh, just to discuss uh, some stuff regarding the uh, current uh, coronavirus and uh, you guys can feel free to ask some questions if you want to or if you want to make some comments that's fine too um, it's uh, it's an interesting time we live in isn't it and uh, I'm uh, intrigued um, as to uh, just the response that a lot of people are having and sort of what's going on uh, just in our communities. Uh, my wife and I went to the uh, the grocery store. Uh, we've gone to the grocery store about three times already uh, since we returned from Ohio. And I've been like just shocked um, at, um, you know, how the grocery stores have been wiped out, how things have been uh just uh you know completely depleted and then and then you know thank god the next day you know they're they're full again so i think grocers are going to make uh, a ton of money on this i know amazon um uh, bezo is uh is raking it in on this uh because we're all sitting at home and uh who who whose work has you know is not active in an office or whatever and uh, and they're you know uh, with not much to do a lot of people are going online and purchasing a lot of stuff um, but I wanted to talk to you just about how I feel uh, currently you know so many churches I'm not currently pastoring a church but I did pastor a church for 17 and a half years I youth pastor 12 years before that um, and a lot of people wrote me and said you know you know, I, I'm really wanting to know, uh, you know, what's happening and, and, you know, how should we respond to all this? You know, should we, should we stop having services? Should we go to do, do the live stream? And I think um, one of the things that I think is really uh, important right now is that, uh, first of all, as some of the media are saying, don't freak out. You know, I mean, this is something I think that the Lord, you know, uh, we've had some only a couple of people uh, regarding our meetings that have said, hey, you know, should we continue with the meeting plans with the meetings when you come? And we've stated, listen, we're planning on coming regardless. We're coming. Um you know, if you cancel them, that's fine. Uh, then we won't. But uh, but if you if you don't cancel them, we're planning on being there. Uh, next week, I'm I'm uh, supposed to uh, I'm supposed to be uh, going uh, on next Tuesday. Mike Smith, our operations uh, director, and I are supposed to be uh, going to Armenia uh, to meet with uh, some Iranians and Armenian leaders, primarily uh, one particular. Um, you know, Armenian leader who uh, is going to be uh, hosting our school there. Um, and, uh, and then also Craig and Joyce Simonian who are there as a part of, a part of this. And um, one of the things that uh, they were like, you know, do you, how, how do you feel? What, do you, what, what, are, what is your sense? And I said, well, as far as fear of traveling, there's none of that for me. And then I've never had that fear. And um, I'm not worried. You got to realize, I mean, I and my friend laid hands on a woman who was died of Ebola in, uh, uh, when we were in Sierra Leone. And, um, you know, even the people at the morgue were terrified that we were touching her and that we had laid hands on her. And of course we didn't get Ebola, you know, uh, nothing happened. And, uh, because we're people of faith and we operate by faith. We don't operate out of fear. We operate, uh, by faith and, and trusting the Lord in all that. At the same time, what does wisdom say? You know, governors are issuing orders um, and, and all of that and, and saying in their, in their orders not to meet over certain groups. Um, one of the things, and, and I was reading um, a, a post that a friend, uh, friends from Catch the Fire in London uh, posted today where said if a pastor, you know, says he's having a service, he'll get criticized for not being sensitive. Uh, if he cancels his service, he'll be criticized for not having enough faith. 
and and as sad as that is i believe that's true there's a lot of people that are saying that uh but i i really believe that our responsibility from my perspective is to have faith and to operate by that if i was pastoring i probably wouldn't cancel services uh, people who don't want to come don't have to come. People who are afraid don't have to be afraid. You know, or they they can stay home if they're afraid. Uh, some people will look at that and say that that's irresponsible and that I am not uh, giving wise advice. And and you know, okay, that's that's your choice. Um, other pastors, good friends of mine, we were just at a church on Sunday and in Cleveland, Ohio. They decided not to have the service but to, to broadcast it. I'm okay with that. We were we sat in the audience as uh, uh, probably only about 20 people in the whole sanctuary uh, listening to the service, and um, and we're there a part of it, and 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 that's fine. And so uh, you know, people who feel to do that, God bless you. People who don't feel to do that, God bless you. Um, uh, we're not. Uh, I understand that we should obey the authorities and do all that, but but let's look past even that and say, how should we respond personally? Uh, there are people in your neighborhoods that desperately need Jesus. I mean, desperately need Jesus, and the only way they're going to encounter Christ is Christ in you. And so, my, one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is stop and look, rather than, are we going to meet for church, or are we not going to meet for church? Uh, and one idea that I wish somebody would do is uh, contact, uh, and if any, anybody watching is a pastor, take note of this, contact a drive-in theater. Ask them if you can put your band up. Uh, many of those drive-in theaters have, have like a platform area or a roof area, or you could pull up a flatbed truck and uh, and and just uh, set up on there and then broadcast where people can listen to the radios and they can pull up and they don't have to operate out of fear. Um, that's a that's an incredible idea. Uh, pray for people. I, I was encouraging some young people who wrote to me um, on uh, social media, and they were like, you know, we're sitting at home, we're bored to tears, you know, what what do we do? And I'm like, go to the grocery store, at, you know, if your parents are okay with it, I don't want anybody to violate their, the rules of their parents, um, Go to go 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 to the grocery store and ask if you can uh, help uh, any senior citizens who need help shopping uh, to push their carts for them and to reach up on the high shelves and to grab things. Tell them, listen, you know the the people who are who are the. Um, the people who are most at risk are the elderly. Offer to, to push their cart. Offer to get the groceries for them. While you're doing that, have a conversation with them about Jesus. Ask them if they have need for healing in their body. Ask them if, you're, if they're in pain. Ask them if they're struggling. Ask them if they're sick. Right now, I would, I would happily go pray for people with uh, this coronavirus or whatever it's called. See see something 72 or whatever it is uh, the, the thing of it is is that uh, you know we, sh we should be looking and, and say how can we reach out to people and help uh, one person uh, I, I talked to uh, one group of young people and they were like I want to do something what do I do and I said go to Costco and and offer to uh, you know offer to pray for people say you know we don't even have to touch you and Jesus can heal you right now if you're afraid or if you or bind the spirit of fear in people a lot of people are just you know so messed up with fear and a spirit of fear this is a time to bind the spirit of fear guys I preach this message on taking a toll I, I want to call every, right now we got about 300 of you watching this. I want to petition all of you. Help me take a toll. Make the enemy pay for this garbage, this crap that he's doing. This is ridiculous. This is supposed, everybody's saying, you know, this is 2020 and all these revivals. I was, I was on the phone with my mentor this morning, Randy Clark, and he said, there's going to be a mighty revival in 2020. The Lord's spoken to me. I know it's going to be a mighty revival in 2020. And, and I told him, I said, that's why this is happening, Randy. That's why this stuff is happening. The enemy's trying to pump us full of fear and trying to get us to run and tuck tail and not be the church that Jesus built, not be the church that Jesus called us to be and we need to step out we need to pull away from this place of fear and pull away from this place of of being you know um 
of, of being encouraged. I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't uh, sign for the for the deaf now. Uh, too many uh, too many words for me to speak. I, I I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. You know, understand. Okay. Uh, next next time, I, I promise I'll sign. Uh, but I, but I can't I can't now. S- sorry. Um, Sorry, there were some deaf friends who were on here asking for signing. Uh, I apologize. Uh, get get a friend to sign for you now, okay? Uh, please, okay? So anyway, the problem is is that all of a sudden we pull back in this place of fear and we begin to do things based on that rather than doing things based on the kingdom. This is a time we need to make the enemy pay for this type of attack. Satan is keeping the church from being the church, uh, I feel like in this moment, by by having us pull back, having us pull away. Listen, if, if the government is going to send people money, let it, let it be them sending money to you for you to be able to step out and to do kingdom activity and be able to go out and share Jesus with people. My friends in Armenia are saying that there's nobody in the streets. There's nobody out. Okay, I understand, but there's elderly people around. There's elderly elderly people in your flats. Uh, for friends in Russia uh, saying that, you know, uh, that that's they're not seeing a, a lot of people either. But there are lots of people in the flats where you live in. You live in high flats, high apartments. Uh, find them. Pray for them. Uh, you know, and and bless them in this time. But we've got to make the enemy pay for this crap that he's trying to pull because he's trying to rob. He's trying to rob us of a mighty move of God. He's trying to rob us of going out and being the hands and feet of Jesus. As my friend uh, Brian Blount says, this is the time that we put Jesus on display. How do we do that? Heal the sick. Uh, command those go. Uh, people are like, but people are dying. Raise the dead. Go out and raise the dead. This is not the time to shrink back. If you got people dying around you, this is the time to begin to operate in power of resurrection. One of my heroes is is has been. Um, and, and I've loved him since I was a kid, has been St. Patrick. St. Patrick raised many people from the dead while he was in our... My friend Marcin uh, from Poland uh, told me that uh, there's records of some people that have been dead for years. I mean, that blew my mind. I mean, the only person I know who's done that has been Jesus uh, when, he was, when he was raised from the dead himself, raised others. But I, I, I believe that, and I know Marcin sent me some information on that. Listen, here's the thing. Bottom line is this, is this is a time for us to step out in a higher level of faith then a higher level of fear. That's how we combat this fear. And so we don't respond by tucking tail, by running. We don't respond by, you know, uh, maybe this is supposed to bring all of us to start having house church. Maybe this is supposed to make you have a house church and do like the underground church in Iran does it, do like the underground church in China does it, do like the underground church throughout the Muslim world does it, and meet in small groups through, through your uh, out in your homes. Put a sign in the yard that says, listen, I know there's no, you know, carnivore virus here or whatever it's called uh coronas virus here uh but there is jesus here and if you want to come and you want to get some um some prayer come and get prayer we're going to pray together we're going to cry out to god together if nobody shows up nobody shows up but you know what at least it is demonstrated to them that you're not operating by this fear that's there to rob them and to rob you but that you're going to operate from the standpoint of having confidence in who christ is. And so I want to encourage you guys, think outside of the box. Think outside of the realm of just natural understanding and begin to think from the perspective of what can we do to do uh, to outreach in our, in, our, in our communities. Again, like I said, some of the ideas is going and pushing a gro- grocery cart for elderly people. They're the ones most at risk. They're the ones that, that have a greater uh, place of risk. And, and because of that, step out. Uh, be willing to go and shop for them. Push the cart for them. Get the groceries for them. Tell them, listen, you don't have to touch anything. You, you, the only thing you need to do is pull your credit card or debit card out and give it to the person and pay for the groceries. Let me come. We'll even unload them in your car for you. 
People are looking. Young people out of schools right now looking for stuff to do. Come on. This is the type of thing to do. Uh, and so, you know, I want to encourage you to, to press into what is going to be being the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm not saying to, to civilly disobey or uncivilly disobey your authorities. What I am saying is this, is that we need to be the, at this time the demonstration of Jesus Christ. Uh, when a friend of mine who was a, a, a missionary to Albania and they were having uh, bombs and attacks happening, there was some civil uh, war taking place in Albania, and he and he and he, he uh, the the U.S. government said, you know, right now is the time, uh, you know you know to reach out to uh you know for for all of the u.s citizens and to get them out of there if they uh because they were talking about needing to uh to get them out of the country and he told me i said i said i'm really curious why didn't you go why did you stay at that time he said because if i left the answer left if i left the hope left if i left the peace left and he said, I am not here to abandon the people that are at this time needing that peace, that hope, that joy, needing that consolation. I'm there as that person to step out and to bring that life and to bring that hope and to bring that goodness. Uh, for other people, so uh, you know it's important that that we step out with uh, uh, the the understanding that that we are there as the solution. The solution is not going to come through the government. I mean, thank God for scientists. Thank God, I pray that that they that they you know are able to to find something in this. But come on, guys. I mean, I mean, really. I mean, is our hope really in vaccinations? I mean, it, some of you are going to really get mad at me for this. And you know what? I really don't care. Jesus wasn't a vaccinated baby. He, he didn't get vaccines. And here, But here's the point of what I'm trying to make, is that when our hope is in that more than it is in the sustainable power of Jesus Christ that we walk out and we live in and that we preach, when we start looking to this other stuff as hope, we are missing the point. We are the solution to this problem. Christ in you is the only hope your community has. And that's not going to come by by keeping it shut up in in walls, by keeping it shut up behind uh, you know doors, that's not going to come. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You know, if you pray and God tells you to do a vaccination, go ahead and do it. I, we don't do it in this house because we we really believe that Jesus Christ can heal and deliver and set free, and that. Thank God for the wisdom he's given. I've had surgery before. I take medication. I'm not saying don't do any of that. At the same time, what I am telling you to do is that if we don't stop and we don't uh, look at, as, as the Christ that has been placed in us, the truth of Jesus Christ that is in us, to bring freedom and to set people free, if we don't realize that that is the hope of the world and it's not going to come through science, it's not going to come through the government, it's going to come through Christ in us, that is when we're going to see mighty revival break out. That's when we're going to see a powerful move of God that's going to break out and that's going to be a complete, revolutionary, transforming, truth-building, uh, absolutely converting uh, billions of people to Christ. When we begin to realize that is who we are, we are not the champions of alternatives. We are the champions of Jesus Christ. He is the answer. He is the solution. And so I, I want to encourage you to, to, to pray. Spend this time to, to search the scriptures. Study the word of God. Spend this time to get closer to Jesus. Yes, absolutely. But also look for opportunities where you can step outside uh, of where you're at and, and be that demonstration of who Christ is. And, and you know, I, I was just watching this person uh, going into one of the stores and putting on the gloves, putting on the mask, just I and I just sat. I thought, wow, this is sad. And I, I, I'm nothing, not nothing against anybody who's doing prevention. If you're doing that, God bless you. No, the, absolutely, no refuting of doing that at all. However, I sat there and I thought, man, if that was my hope, if that was my only hope, and it wasn't Jesus Christ, I don't think I'd have any. 
I think I'd be in a sad, sad shape. And I began to, uh, you know, just uh, stop and think that, man, and I stopped this guy and I said, you know what? I said, um, I, I, I can pray for you now for the protection of Jesus Christ and he will cover you and he will he will protect you. I said, Jesus is the answer for this pandemic and he's the solution for this virus. And, and the guy said, yeah, please, I need prayer. Let me tell you guys, People are desperate for prayer. People are open for prayer. And so, as I said, you know, take your kids, take young people, uh, take others with you uh, to step out and to demonstrate uh, the, the power of Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Right now, what I want to do is I want to pray against this foul spirit of fear and I want to pray, too, against this isolation. And when I say isolation, I'm not talking about trying to be wise and not spreading the virus. But, I want to, but, but what I mean is, is when we, when we are isolating based on fear, rather than just based on wisdom or something like that, then fear is leading. And we don't, we're not called to be people of fear. We are called to be people that are bold as lions. We are called to be people that are not afraid to go. Jesus touched the lepers. He touched the lepers. Now, we know now that leprosy is not necessarily contagious. In that time, people you know, didn't know that. Jesus was a part of the Godhead, so maybe he had some inside information. But there were people, I'm sure, that Jesus came in direct contact with that had sickness, that had disease. He did not back off from them. He reached out. He touched them. He was, he was not afraid. He didn't operate by fear. He operated by faith. And like I said, uh, there's been people, uh, dead bodies I prayed for that I didn't know what they had or what killed them. And there have been times, and like I said, I prayed for people that had just died from Ebola. And, you know, and we were praying for them to be raised from the dead and for that, uh, for the Ebola to be cleansed from their bodies. We have got to be the people of faith. We have got to be the people of strength in that. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind the foul spirit of fear off of everyone who is watching now. You're a liar, fear. You are lied to the people of God. You lied to humanity. And I declare the boldness of lions, the boldness and the courage of of the uh, the power of Jesus Christ to fill each and every one who is watching right now, and we shake off, we shake off that foul fear, and we say, "You're a liar. You don't belong to us." Because Jesus said, "We're more than conquerors through Him." Jesus said that He made us to be overcomers. He didn't make us to be people that shrink back. He didn't make us people to hide. He made us to be people bold as lions. And so we declare, uh, everyone watching everyone as a believer to be watching and to be bold as lions and if there's anybody watching now that you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you have not made him Lord right now is your time right now is the time of salvation today is the day of salvation in a time where there's calamity in the time where there's destruction now is the time to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ and I just want if you're if you're here and you're watching this and you have not accepted Christ and you want to do that now, I even want you to post in this uh, feed, but I'm going to pray with you and I want you to repeat after me as I pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you now. I confess my sins. I am a sinner. I need salvation. I need Jesus. Right now, I accept you, Jesus. Come into my life. Cleanse me. Forgive me of my sins. Make me a new creation in Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Teach me. Lead me. Guide me. Give me that new identity that Christ gives and that Holy Spirit enables. I receive you, Jesus, and I receive new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, 
It's just that simple. It's just that clear. And that's what the world needs. They don't need us to be responding by shrinking back. They need us to be responding by stepping up. Give us your stories. Give us your comments of what you're doing as people need prayer. As you see people, I want you to respond and let us know and give us feedback of how you're responding to this. We'll try to do another one of these where we're going to share some of the people's stories and say what some people are doing. I've shared what we've done and what some people that we've advised to do. And so I want to encourage you, step out. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Don't operate by fear. There's revival coming. As my mentor Randy Clark said today as we were talking, there's revival coming in 2020. And he, he said, he said, Robbie, you're a giant slayer. And he goes, and you're here to make more giant slayers. And that's what I declare to you that you are. You are a giant slayer. And this virus, it's a giant. We won't take it sitting down. This giant will fall and it will come down for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. I love you. We'll try to do some more of this during this time. But do not operate by the place of fear, but by the place of encouragement and faithfully trusting in Jesus Christ and who he has made you to be. I love you guys. I'm proud of you. You're mighty people of God. If you want more resources on how to step out to do what Jesus did, go to my website at, at, at Robbie Dawkins, R-O-B-B-Y, don't forget the Y, D-A-W-K-I-N-S dot com. And then also, uh, for, there's a couple, uh, somebody said here, you know, if you're still going to um, uh, if you're still going to the Middle East to Armenia we want to help you there's a partner page on there where you can click on partnering with us uh, please do that we're planning on making a total of 10 trips to the Middle East this year to train and to equip Iranians Syrians um, uh, Armenians to equip uh, Turks and Iraqis and Pakistanis so um, God is on the move and it's mighty God bless you guys love you Go for it. Give us your stories of what Jesus is doing through you and any ideas that you have. So again, somebody get a hold of some, uh, make sure to do this, get a hold of some of those um, some of those drive-in theaters and hold church in there so people can be in their cars who are afraid to go to church. All right? Love you guys. Let's change the world together. And remember, Jesus first, safety last.